So I've opened up the hot plate and I'm going to put the iron on the bit that I happen to know is the hottest, hottest part of the hot plate. And I'll put that one on for good measure as well, but there's no hot coals in it now. This one's got a wooden handle, which strikes me as very sensible. This one hasn't. So I suppose I'll have to use like a, a cloth like you would for a pan to protect my hands. I was wondering whether you could wrap string around it. And I think I probably should have a cloth for wiping the bottom of it with, because although it has been cleaned, I don't know whether it will pick up anything off the hot plate because it's not the cleanest. So I'd better get a rag or a tea towel or something to wipe. Wipe the plates before I then dirty some bit of clean clothing. So I'm going to leave them to heat up. I don't know how long that's going to take. The iron's been on the hot plate about five minutes now and it's already starting to smoke, which is a little worrying. Um, it has just been cleaned with thinners. So it might be that that's smoking, or it might just be, there is also paint on the iron, but we're not heating up the paint. But obviously, because the whole iron does heat up, the paint will will be a little bit right, So the iron's now quite hot. It's smoking a bit, which I think is the paint on the outside of the iron. And so that I don't ruin something, I've got a blouse of mine that's linen, but it's one I bought off eBay from a, and it's second hand. And if anything happens to it, I can wash it on a really high temperature. And if it gets scorched or paint on it, I'm not going to cry. Because um, I don't actually like it very much, but it's just something handy that I've got for wearing for work and not ruining something nicer. I've also got a tea towel, which is just one of my normal tea towels, but I'll give the plate a quick wipe with. And I must remember to use this because the handle is now too hot to touch. I've also got a little stand for the iron there. I'm not very good at ironing my clothes at the best of occasions, so I'll start with the hem. I might start on the underside as well. Hello, so I have speeded up the footage of me ironing this shirt because I took quite some time over it and I chatted fairly inanely through it. So I'm adding a voiceover to hopefully make it a bit clearer and cut down how much of my, well, my wrists that you end up looking at because I haven't quite mastered getting the camera in the right place, as you can see. So what did I think? Um, number one, the paint did come off the iron for the for the on the first shirt, which is why I used, which is why I used a shirt that I didn't particularly care about. Obviously, I could have used a bit of rag and ironed for quite a while to get rid of that paint. So by the time it's finished. It had stopped doing that and it was ready to ready to be used normally. Other observations, because the shirt's linen, uh, I think it would have been really helpful if I had ironed it a little bit damp. This is where we have the advantage of modern steam irons. The steam adds moisture to the fabric, which makes the fabric more soft and manipulable and easier to iron. So there's there's already the advantage of a steam iron over a flat iron and a cold iron like this. And, um, yeah, that's that was my main observation. Obviously, you could work with a spray bottle of water, like like I do sometimes with garments anyway, to add steam. Or I could have starched the garment, which would, although would have made it harder to work with, it would also have sort of... It would have meant that the the pressing that I did stayed crisper and firmer. But that's, that's the difference between a, a starched garment and a non-starched garment anyway. The other thing I talked about while ironing was the fact that I'm not actually very good at ironing. I really thought I would get better at it when I worked in a theatre because you have to wash wash and iron all the clothes used in the production most days. All right, not all, all the all the sort of things that you would you would iron normally. So suits, shirts, blouses, dresses, that sort of thing. And it was mostly shirts because generally on the whole we worked on productions where all the men had some sort of shirt that needed ironing. Sometimes they had two shirts as well for two show days, so you'd have to do both of them. And I never really got 
that good at ironing shirts. I got a little bit quicker, but never as good as my boss, who, before working in a theatre, she had been a mum at home. Well, before that, she'd worked in the fashion industry and done a very interesting job. And then she brought up her three children and she had to iron, you know, 15 shirts a week for them to wear to school, plus another five to seven shirts for her husband to wear to work. So I think she could iron a shirt in about two, two to three minutes and she'd just sort of bash through them. Um, and I really hoped I'd end up like her, but I obviously never, never quite, quite got to her record. I just now iron, you know, the blouses and skirts that I wear on a, on a daily basis. And I think I also said, you know, sometimes I don't even bother with ironing the back. I just make sure the front and the collar looks nice and the cuffs. If I'm wearing a cardigan or it's winter. Uh, so yes, definitely not winning any prizes as a laundry maid. I also talk about um, gender gender roles and stereotypes and how we don't consider laundry uh, particularly skilled. And yet, uh, you know, maids maids using irons like this, looking after their mistresses' wardrobes in big posh country houses and townhouses, would have been highly skilled not to ruin those beautiful white worked and lace garments that we think of ladies wearing so never 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 forget what's come before you or consider it unskilled I think that's often a mistake made when we think about the past in general we think of them as how could they achieve how could they achieve such you know beautiful or as precise things as us because they didn't have the technology or the advances and actually because they had the time and the skill and because materials were so much more expensive you you could achieve wonders in that time because there was no there was nothing to stop you becoming that skilled it was just practice and time and effort and that's something that i think gets forgotten and that's a mistake made with what we think about sewing as well as about looking after looking after garments as good as that I mean, it is linen. Please don't judge me too harshly. It always does look a bit crumpled. It just looks like it's naturally crumpled now rather than fully crumpled from a day's wear. So some starch would help. Possibly ironing it while it was still a bit damp would help. But I don't think I'd be getting very far as a, a laundry maid in a big house, would I? Right, what can I iron next? Final go at this. This is one of one of my little twenties blouses that I wear. Well, the one I'm wearing here is one as well. So they they do sort of Edwardian through to twenties really. I make them out of small leftover bits of fabric normally. This one was once quite a nice stripy white linen, but it got some pink speckled dye on it by accident. And after when I couldn't get the dye out, I then sort of washed it with a one of those sort of colour corrector. No, not a colour corrector. Something that's meant to take the dye out before you then re recolour a fabric and it sort of made it go this sort of all over. It used to be quite orange, now it's sort of cream and I've noticed that it started to tear under the arms which is where these blouses go because they're sort of raglin all in one style. So it's got a bit of zigzagging under this arm to repair it where it's torn. And I've noticed because it's quite a sort of textured weave that some of the some of the, the weave's starting to pull through. So. If it gets ruined, it's not the end of the world. And now that I have my enforced time at home, I can definitely make some more of these blouses. And I have lots of, I like them in linen, so I've got lots of bits of fabric to use up to make them. Um, so let's give this one a go. I'll start at the hem as with the others. The thing is I normally put them over the ironing board and I've got the other camera here. So that's sort of impeding that. So I'll have to sort of iron it flat. So this is me ironing the final shirt. I've really got the hang of it by now. I did iron another one in between that I've cut that down because you really don't need to see that, which is a much darker shirt. So that also hid any of the last remaining paint that may have been coming off the iron. Um, while I'm here as well, as I haven't got this bit of footage included in the video, the much taller iron that I'm using now, that actually has a hinge and that round handle on it lifts up and so you can put hot coals inside that iron as well like you would a warming pan so that while so that keeps the iron hot while you're using it for longer so though you probably would put it back on the fire the hot coals would heat it from the inside and keep it warm as well so it's not a fully solid base 
like the little flat iron it's actually it's hollow inside so you can do that um at some point when i have some charcoal or some coals on a fire i will have a go at using it like that as well i've never seen one like that before until i got this one i'm sure they exist but they um, i'm sure lots of them exist but you don't see as many as you do the flat irons as you see the flat irons being used as door stops or pattern weights or ornaments and in antique shops and things like that but i'd not seen the the one that opened before um i suppose that's about all i really have to say about say about ironing um yes i think the answer to this is appreciate what you have and take advantage of the the ease of modern irons and modern steam irons I will have further experiments using these. I'd definitely like to have a go at starching some garments because starch is something that interests me anyway from my research into 16th century ruffs and how to set and style those. Um, but yes, I also would like to have a go at perhaps, you know, starching some more Edwardian style clothing, maybe some men's shirts with the stiff collars and pressing those with these irons. But I don't think I'll be... Um, I don't think I'll be adding to my slightly old-timey, old-fashioned lifestyle by using these irons regularly, unless we really do have a power outage and that's all I've got. Um, so yeah, don't think I'm doing this because I want to live in the past. I'm very happy with my with my life now. Um, it's a little bit interesting, as it as everything is with these uncertain times, but I don't miss. I don't miss this this side of the past, but I'm intrigued to try it out and have a go at what our, what our past well, self did. Are, three blouses. It's taken me about two hours to do three blouses, what with heating things up, making a cup of tea, hanging some washing on the line. So definitely I'm not going to get anywhere as a laundry maid. I've just noticed a bit of fluff on my apron. I'll have to stay there. Um... I hope this was fun. I'm sorry I haven't got a better tripod so I could have filmed down on anything. I was only looking at here and the angle from over here. But I'm an amateur and a beginner at this so we can only hope it gets better if, if I try and do a bit more.